Now, one year into COVID-19 pandemic, the government is still scrambling to bridge the gaps in contact tracing, especially in Metro Manila, where cases continue to go up. What exactly are the roots of the problem? Mobile journal Jacob Lazaro will tell us in this report. It's one of the major pillars in the fight against COVID-19. But in recent months, contact tracing has been a losing battle, at least in Metro Manila, the epicenter of the pandemic. Quezon City has the highest number of COVID cases in the national capital region, yet it only has 1,200 contact tracers, a third of what this city of almost 3 million people needs. Lalo na nung talagang sobrang increase ng cases, eh. sa ganun talaga, eh. lalo na uh, minsan kinukulang na rin sa tao, mm-hmm. yun po. Okay. Eh, meron talaga, may mga na-delay din, pero as much as possible, uh, the coming days, habulin, habulin ng habulin lang talaga, talaga. A big part of the problem is funding. The problem with contact tracing is before DILG gave I think the LG has about 15,000 contact tracers. They were given budget under Bayanit 2, if I'm not mistaken. But all of a sudden, it stopped. So the mayors were caught off guard. So I- Last year, the Department of Interior and Local Government hired 50,000 contact tracers, using 5 billion pesos from the Bayanihan Fund. But when the virus cases dropped late last year, only 500 million pesos was set aside from the national budget for contact tracing. Combined with the money left over from the Bayanihan Act, the DILG could only hire 15,000 contact tracers. That's just a third of last year's numbers of tracers. When the COVID infection surged in March, Metro Manila had to scramble to find and fund more contact tracers. Hindi ka naman pwedeng mag-surge, mag-hire, mag-train. Pag bumaba, mag- you will remove the contact tracers. Yeah. When cases go up exponentially, your contact tracers cannot go up exponentially as well. Malaya says passage of the Bayanihan 3 could provide the funding they need. But the bill is not moving in the Senate. Uh, we hope that Congress will still pass a Bayanihan 3. Okay. And uh, if they do, we hope that uh, there will be uh, substantial funding for us to be able to rehire the contact tracers, which we were not able to hire for this year. The World Health Organization says there should be one contact tracer for every 800 people. But Metro Manila, with a population of 13 million, has only 10,000 contact tracers. That's one tracer for every 1,500 people. This means that people like Jet have to work doubly hard to get the job done. Uh, uh, Yung mga hindi pa nababaan or sabi natin na contact trace, Baka kasi makalabas pa. Sabi, kasi pina, hindi, supposedly dapat nagka-quarantine kayo sila eh. Malaki yung chance na makahawa pa talaga. Originally, the Department of Labor and Employment planned to donate 14,000 contact tracers for one month. But being short in funds, it went down to 5,000 for three months. For now, the Metro Manila Development Authority says it is putting together a patchwork of temporary contact tracers to meet the needs of the NCR. But the good news is Secretary Bello called me up the other day and he allotted 5,000 contact tracers for Metro Manila. In the meantime, the burden falls on the people like Jet to man the fort. Ito kinukulang sa tao ng contact tracing, pero yung community naman, active naman sila. I'm Jacob Lazaro in We Are One News.